So we were asking if you know your nationality according to the Bible. Do you know your nationality? No. Okay, so most of us would say that we are African American or black or Negro or whatever, right? But that's not the proper nationality that we was given, right? Because what language did we speak before the transatlantic slave trade? That's a big, that's a big question, right? What type of food did we eat before the transatlantic slave trade? Did we have dietary laws? Watch this, let me show you something. Give me that uh, Jeremiah chapter 17. I'm gonna show you something in the Bible. Then we are gonna prove to you what your nationality is, all right? If you walk up here, you will see your, your nationality on this sign, read. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse four. Read. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So God said, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians, you're going to discontinue from your true heritage that I gave thee. Now, when I said blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, your eyebrows kind of raised up a little bit. We all m made up one nation at one point in time, okay? We were one nation at one point in time. Uh, you have the Northern Kingdom of Israel and the Southern Kingdom of Israel, all right? Most of the, the Northern Kingdom tribes are your Hispanics and Native American Indians, right? They came over here and they went into slavery 300 years before the Southern Kingdom of Israel, which is the, the, the so-called Negroes, Blacks, Jamaicans, and Haitians, okay? But we have the same bloodline in us. We literally have the same blood. We come from the same forefathers, okay? So keep that in the back of your mind, read. And thou, even thyself, uh -huh. shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, uh -huh. and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. Okay, so remember what I said about the so-called Hispanics and Native Americans going into slavery 300 years before the so-called black man, right? But guess what? We the same nation of people. All right, so the big question. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. How do we know that we the Israelites? Uh, what's your father? Is he a so-called African-American? He Native American, that means you come from the tribe of Gad that's, right. that's on this sign up here, alright? The, no, the Native American Indians come from, descend from the tribe of Gad. That's a mighty nation of people, alright? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Is your mom from the tribe of Gad as well? Or just your father? Um, she's African American and Native American. Okay, what about her father? She don't know. She don't know? Okay, all praises. Read that. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Okay, so you as a so-called Native American Indian, God said, listen, if you don't listen to what I ask you to do, all these curses will come upon thee and overtake thee, right? Now, I want you to really think on your history on your family history, all right? Watch this, read. Curse shall thou be in the city. How were the so-called Native Americans cursed in the city? They had to be removed from their homes. They, they were removed from their homes. They were, uh, what, do, what do you call it, besieged? They were killed, raped, robbed, murdered. America belonged to the Native American Indians. Right. Now they have portions of this, uh, of this land. Just small portions of this land. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's God's curse according to the Bible, right? So the Native Americans were cursed in the city. Read. And cursed shall thou be in the field. How were the Native Americans cursed in the field? That's right. They were driven out of their own fields. Their corn, everything was burned up. Their bison was killed. You understand that? The so-called Native Americans were cursed in the field. If you go further south, to uh, South America, they were slaves. The Native Americans became slaves in the strawberry farms. Right. And guess what? The Native Americans were sent to um, Germany to work in their fields. They were sent to uh, to Spain to work in their fields. Do you understand that? So the so-called Native Americans were cursed in the fields. Read. Verse 17. Read. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. It says, curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Now think about the so-called Native Americans today. Even the so-called uh, the, the, uh, Seminole Indians, right? Because they're closely, uh, very close relation to Benjamin and Judah. Read, read that again. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. It says, curse shall be thy basket and thy store. What is this talking about? Give me Haggai chapter one, verse six. I'm gonna show you something real quick. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. 
Now, that, keep in the back of your mind that this land was yours at one point in time. It was all. It was all yours. Keep that in the back of your mind. Read. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 6. Read. Ye have sown much uh -huh. and bring in little. Now think about the so-called Native Americans. They sold in their own fields and, and they brought in little. Matter of fact, I remember reading uh, it was one particular one particular year that they sold corn, they sold all kinds of crops, and the white man came in and took it all. So that's going to show you that you sold much and bring in little. And, and, and you think about Thanksgiving, right? That's sowing much and bringing in little. The pilgrims didn't have nothing to do with the so-called Native American Indians. That was a curse. They killed our people, gave them smallpox blankets. You understand what I'm saying? Read. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Think about it. Because this whole land was yours. But guess what? When you eat, you don't have enough. That's symbolic from living paycheck to paycheck, too. Read. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Now think about it. Every lake that belonged to this country, every river that belonged to this country, do you pay a water bill? But this land was rightfully yours. That is a curse according to the Bible. You see what I'm saying, sister? Hey, this is your history right here. Read that. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. That's living paycheck to paycheck. Even though this country belonged to you, the resources belonged to you, the water belonged to you. Right. You understand that? Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Oh, I'm sorry, read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. Read. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. So what was that nation that came in and took, the, the conquistadors that came in and took over? Exactly. That was a nation that we did not know. But they came right over and took our people's property, took our people's land. They took our people. Read. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. So we were oppressed and crushed always. See, my grandmother, she, she was a Cherokee. And I got all, we got to read about all of this. You understand what I'm saying? They were crushed and oppressed, and still crushed and oppressed today. Think about the pipeline that, that the so-called white man is trying to run through their land right now. You understand that, sister? A oil pipeline, this land, this reservation was supposed to be yours, but you even cursed with a curse. Double cursed, because that land was supposed to be our land, right? But they took that land too. We gonna run a pipeline oil through this land to give more jobs to the so-called white man. Read that. Verse 37, Read. and thou shalt become an astonishment, uh -huh. a proverb and a byword. Now it says thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword. Let's look at the word astonishment. The word astonishment means a very shocking thing, right? Now you were so-called Gadite, but you resonate with the Judites, right? What's so astonishing about our Native American women? Our Judite women, our black women, and Hispanic women. What's that? Hair skin. I can't hear you. Hair and skin. Hair and skin, right? That's a shocking thing, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go even further. Why did we put another nation's hair in our head? Right. Because we, the reference you just said, that basically you said that our skin and our hair is the most beautiful skin, right? Why do we cover it up with other nations' uh, hair? Exactly. That's a shocking, astonishing thing according to the Bible. Read that. An astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. Now, a proverb is a very wise saying, right? Now, what's a wise saying that, our, that the so-called white men say about the Native Americans and black people and Hispanics? They say Hispanics always pile cars, right? They say that black people love chicken and watermelon. What they say about the Native American Indians? They copper. They, uh, yeah, they drink a lot. That's what they say about the so-called Native Americans. See what I'm saying? God said there's a, a, a proverb that's been placed on your people. That, this, that just goes to show you that this is yours. This Bible is yours. Read. And a byword uh -huh. among all nations. Now, a byword is any name outside of the name that God gave you. For instance, the word Seminole means runaway slave. That's a byword among our people. You understand what I'm saying? Native American. That's, hold on, first of all, let's deal with the word American. Amerigo Vespucci. 
He was, a, he was an Italian map maker, right? How did you get the name from a white man when you uh, was a so-called Native American? I mean, a so-called Gadite. How did you get that? They took our name. Exactly. Exactly. You were, you were very smart, sister. We gotta get it. And they by word among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. Uh -huh. Now, let, let, me, uh, let me clear something up real quick. Go to verse 68 real quick. Uh, 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 Proto Junction, 1802. Uh, Highway, 161. Highway 161, Proto Junction in Northern Rock, okay? Read that. Deuter what's this, what's this, sister? Read. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. I, mean, I said 68, I meant to say 64. Read that. Verse 64. Read. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods. Okay, so I hope you listen to this, sister. It says, God shall scatter us from one end of the earth even unto another, and there we shall serve other gods. Let me prove something heavy with the Native American Indians. Give me 2 Ezra chapter 13, verse 40. Bring I'm going to show you something, how we were scattered. All right? Because before, even before America, we were oppressed. Because the Assyrians had took us into captivity. The right. Babylonians had took us into captivity. Right. The Egyptians took us into captivity. Right. This wasn't our first captivity. Do you want to say that? Read that. Second Edges, chapter 13 and verse 40. Read. It up. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land. So there was ten tribes carried away prisoners out of their own land. Okay? There was a northern and southern kingdom. Israel, which was the northern kingdom, and Judah, which was the southern kingdom. Right. We all had our own portions of land. And God, in particular, had the best land everywhere they went. Right. You understand that? Read. In the time of Hosea the king. In the time of Hosea the king, read. Whom Salmaneser, the king of Assyria, led away captive. Okay, so the king of Assyria led the Native Americans and the Hispanics away captive. Right? Read. And he carried them over the waters, so and so came they into another land. So they went into Assyria. That's why you see a lot of our people in Assyria. That's why you see the history of our people, hieroglyphs, petroglyphs, on the walls in Assyria. All right, read. Verse 41, but they took this counsel among themselves. So let me clear something up. The petroglyphs and the hieroglyphs that's on the walls in Assyria is written in Hebrew. Paleo-Hebrew, the original tongue. Okay, so keep that in the back of your mind, all right? Read. That they would leave the multitude of the heathen. So they said, the Native Americans said to themselves, we got to leave these people. Because they oppressing us, they killing us, they killing our babies, they doing all kinds of stuff to us. That's what the Native Americans said when they were amongst the Assyrian people. Read. And go forth into a further country. So they said, we got to go somewhere else, somewhere far away. Read. Where never mankind dwelt. So they said, we got to go somewhere nobody has ever been. How did they know about the land that they went to? It was King Solomon that showed them. The That's Phoenicians. Right. All right, read that they might dare keep their statues, uh -huh. which they never kept in their own land. So when they got to this other land, they said, we just go keep these statues, which they never kept in their own land. Because in the, before the land of Assyria, we had to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And we didn't. Moses gave us the law, statutes, and commandments before we went into slavery in Assyria, and we never kept it. Right. So they said, we got to leave the Assyrians, go somewhere, and keep God's laws there. All right, read. And they entered into Euphrates. Okay, so this is the geographical route that they took to get to that further land. We, we keep in mind, we're still talking about the Native American Indians and the Hispanics, okay? Read. By the narrow passages of the river, uh -huh. for the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood. So the Euphrates at this point in time, it was rough. The river was very rough, but that's still the route they took. God held still the flood and the, and the rising of the water for them, all right? Read. So they were passed over. But through that country, there was a great way to go. So to get to that further land, it was a great way to go. It was a great way to go. Oh, oh. Right here. Okay, so, wait, where's the Euphrates? Right, it's the east side of Africa going all the way along the coast. All oh, right, it's this uh this river right here. So they right near the now they took the river, the Euphrates, all right? They didn't go by by sea, they went on the river, all right? Read. For through that country there was a great way to go. So it, it took a long time for them to get to this further country, all right? Read. 
namely of a year and a half. So the Native Americans, it took a year and a half by boat to get to where they was going. Right. Right, they had ships. Uh, King Solomon had a navy of ships that was on reserve, all right? Read. And the same region is called Arsareth. Right, so you know how our people, uh, well, the so-called white men say, the Native Americans came here through the Bering Strait and they descended from um, Asiatic people, right? That's a lie. The Bible says that you came through the through the, through the year of phrase, all right? Right. I, and even Christopher Columbus knew that. He used the Bible, he used this very scripture to get over here. You understand that? He used some, uh, what you call Moors, the black of Moors, which we call Moors today, and Israelites to use the to use their tongue to get over here. That's exactly what happened. All right, read that again. I'm sorry. Second Edges, chapter 13, verse 45. Uh -huh. For through that country, there was a great way to go, uh -huh. namely of a year and a half. So it took a year and a half for them to get here. How did they know to get here? King Solomon, read. And the same region is called Arsareth. The same region is called what? Arsareth. Now, it says that land that they went to, you listening? The land that they went to that was far away, that took a year and a half to get there, that the geographical route was to go through the Euphrates, was called Arsareth. All right? Now, what is Arsareth? America. Right. If you look up the word Arsareth, it's America today. Yes, so our right. people went from Assyria and traveled here to America to keep God's laws here. Where's the proof in that, right? Outside of because the Bible is all we need. But outside of the Bible, all you got to do is read the Lost Tribes in the Promised Land. Bring That's a book. The pyramids that are over here, they learned to build them in Egypt as slaves. Right. Right? The pyramids that are here right now, they learned that somewhere else. It was in the eastern countries first. How did they get here? Because we were the people that built them here. And we were the people that built them there, all right? We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.